probably heard of Cab Calloway, one of the greatest jazz artists of all time. But did you know he had a sister who was a force to be reckoned with in the jazz world? This is her story. Blanche Calloway was born into a middle-class family in Rochester, New York. Her parents recognized her talent at a young age and made arrangements for classical music studies in piano and voice. But Calloway loved popular music, especially the stylings of cabaret singer and entertainer Florence Mills and blues singer Ida Cox. After graduating high school in Baltimore, Calloway briefly attended Morgan State University before leaving the world of academia to tour with cabaret shows. In 1921, she performed in Shuffle Along, the first Broadway-style musical for an all-Black cast. Although she played a minor role, she was mesmerized by the jazz tunes, elaborate dance numbers, costumes, and lights, and believed there was a bigger place for her on the stage. She got her first big break in 1923 when she joined a national tour of the musical review Plantation Days alongside one of her favorite artists, Florence Mills. While on tour in Chicago, she decided to strike out on her own and plant roots in the bustling jazz hub. Calloway quickly became a Chicago favorite, landing a residency at the prestigious Sunset Cafe. Chicago audiences couldn't get enough of her. She was beautiful, talented, vivacious, brash, and sassy, and completely unconcerned about fitting in the mold of a traditional female singer. While in Chicago, Calloway helped her younger brother, Cab, secure performances at the Sunset Cafe. The less experienced Calloway watched his sister on stage in all her glory. He surely took notes because her larger than life presence had an undeniable influence on his own style. As American jazz pianist Pearl Hines once shared, Blanche Calloway, Cab's sister, had a very good way of entertaining. She was wild and wiry in certain things and very sensitive in others. Although Cab may not say this himself, all of his style was from her. His sister taught him everything he knew about performing. Blanche Calloway's success in Chicago led to sold out engagements in Atlantic City, Boston, Kansas City, New York, Pittsburgh, and St. Louis. She was in demand as a solo artist, but she wanted more. In 1932, Calloway became the first woman ever to lead an all-male ensemble when she established her own group, Blanche Calloway and her Joy Boys. The group toured internationally and stateside, appearing in such venues as New York City's Lafayette Theater, the Harlem Opera House, and the Apollo Theater. With each performance, Blanche Calloway and her Joy Boys gained momentum until things came to a screeching halt. In 1936, while on tour in Mississippi, Calloway used the women's restroom at a gas station in Yazoo City, unaware that segregation laws did not permit her to do so. Within minutes, police arrived on the scene. Officers pistol whipped one of the Joy Boys, jailed Calloway and her badly beaten band member, and fined them both $7.50. While they were in jail, another band member stole the group's money and abandoned them in Mississippi. With no other options for resolving the situation, Calloway was forced to sell her yellow Cadillac for funds to leave the state. Blanche Calloway and her Joy Boys never recovered from the Mississippi incident. The group disbanded and Calloway ultimately decided to shift her focus. In the 1950s, Calloway moved to Washington, D.C. to manage the nightclub, Crystal Cavern. In this new role, she met and became manager for Ruth Brown, the queen of R&B, helping her secure her first contract with Atlantic Records. Thereafter, Calloway moved to Miami, Florida, where she worked as a disc jockey and became a civil rights advocate. She worked tirelessly on voting rights in the state and 
In 1958, she became the first African-American woman to vote in Florida. In her final years, Calloway moved to her hometown of Baltimore and married her high school sweetheart. She died on December 16, 1978 at the age of 76. Reflecting on his sister's legacy, Cal Calloway once said, Blanche had a vivacious, lovely personality. Plus, she was a heck of a singer and dancer, fabulous, happy, and extroverted. Blanche Calloway proved that women could be dynamic leaders in the jazz world and that their voices deserved to be heard. She was determined to do everything her male counterparts did and to do it even better. And now, a little music from Blanche Calloway and her Joy Boys. This is Just a Crazy Song, recorded in 1931. Did this inspire her brother's Heidi, Heidi, Heidi Ho from Minnie the Moocher? Maybe so. Hi, hi, hi. Hi, hi, hi. Holy, holy, ho. Holy, holy, ho. Say, Blanche, what is wrong? Nothing, boy. It's just a crazy song. Ha <laughs> ha 